Hello. It's uh, great to see you all here in uh, Thesis, uh, and I would like also to welcome those uh, joining us uh, online on uh, LMTS Traume and uh, Festivals uh, LAMP uh, website. Uh, uh, my name is Dats Helman, and I'm the head of the Institute for Corporate Responsibility and Sustainability. And today I will be leading uh, this uh, important discussion uh, about Nordic perspectives on enhancing labor market and inclusion of the disabled people. And together with today's panelists, we will try to find an answer to the question how to leave no one behind in uh, Latvia. Uh, this discussion is organized by the Nordic uh, Council of Ministers office in Latvia and the Embassy of uh, Finland. And the uh, discussion is one of the Nordic Talks uh, conversation. Uh, Nordic Talks is a common name for discussions in which issues important to the Nordic countries and Northern Europe are highlighted. Um, I'm uh, happy uh, to introduce you with uh, today's uh, panelists, people, uh, experts, uh, very experienced uh, in the field of uh, uh, diversity and um, inclusiveness. Uh, I would, uh, uh, I, I'm happy that um, Jukka Lindberg from uh, Vates Foundation from Finland uh, will be present today. Albin uh, Falkmer, uh, director of uh, Swedish-owned uh, state-owned company Samhall, and Katrina Sevroka from Social Integration uh, State uh, Agency. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, uh, before we start, uh, I could I would like to ask you uh, introduce uh, with your organizations. Uh, in short, uh, you are all, as I just mentioned, very experienced, uh, and um, organizations in which you you which you represent uh, today are uh, really. Uh, mm, um, very much, much involved, so so your experience today will be uh, absolutely uh, absolutely um, uh, important. So maybe you, Albin, can start. Thank you, and thank you for inviting me to this great uh, arrangement. Uh, so Samhall is a Swedish state-owned company with a mission to create meaningful and developing jobs for people with disabilities, and it must be real jobs jobs on the open labor market, jobs that will win in competition with other companies. So it's not just meaningful activities, it's real jobs with real salaries. And we only employ people with disabilities that cannot find any other jobs due to their reduced working capacities. And then we train them, we educate, we build self-esteem, build competencies, so they hopefully can leave us for regular jobs on the, on the regular labor market. So that's like the construction of Samal. And we are actually a huge company, Sweden's largest company, if you see through the number of employees within the borders of Sweden. We have uh, 26,000 employees and a turnover of about 1 billion euros. So it's kind of a big company. Yeah, sounds amazing. Um, Katrin. Yeah, I can only agree that this is a very exciting opportunity for us to be here and to speak, speak about this topic to all of you to share our own experience. I work in a social integration state agency and we have an experience for more than 30 years already of educating, of providing vocational rehabilitation for persons with disabilities, supporting them, joining the labor market by our career support specialists and providing, of course, providing vocational training programs, different kind of level, different professions, professions that are necessary right now at the labor, mar at the labor market and, uh, yeah, together with a very multidisciplinary supporting team in our agency. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much also you know, for my part to invite me here. Uh, it's very happy to be here presenting what we are doing in Finland. Uh, I actually represent like three different uh, sort of perspectives here. Uh, but this foundation is the leading expert organization for uh, issues on, on equal and inclusive uh, job market and, and people with disabilities uh, entering job market. I also work uh, uh, quite uh, deeply in, in a new established uh, 
a center of expertise for social enterprising, uh, where we are developing the field of, uh, of exclusive, uh, exclusive companies, integrated work integration companies. And thirdly, but not leastly, I'm a board member of three different uh, companies uh, working on the field of uh, inclusive uh, uh, jobs, and one of them is uh, Työkanava, which is a state-owned new company. Actually, the law comes into force today, and, and it's based uh, on the Samhall model of Sweden. We had spoke with Alvin that seven years ago we first had a like, <laughs> presentation about that we should get something like this in Finland. Uh, thanks. Uh, dealing uh, on a daily basis with different entrepreneurs, uh, employers, and also in public space we can uh, hear uh, uh, employers complaining uh, about lack of uh, workforce, lack of qualified workforce, but still uh, a few years ago we conducted uh, together with market research company Kantar, we conducted the survey of employers and uh, we actually found out that uh, employers are not so open for uh, diversity and uh, despite the fact that they lack the workforce, they uh, are um, uh, ready to assess uh, not only professional uh, professional skills uh, or uh, competences or potential of uh, employees, but but also uh, um, but also different features not related to professional uh, professional qualification. Um, Katrin, uh, I would like to start uh, with with your experience. You uh, probably know uh, the best. What is the current situation in Latvia? Is uh, the situation uh, improving, or we are we are still having challenges in this field? I would say that we are still having challenges, of course, because uh, employing persons with disabilities is still kind of not. I can say new topic, but we are starting to speak about it loudly or only very recently. But what can I say is that we really see in the previous years that the situation is improving slowly, really slowly, but improving. Um, these things, why it is getting a little bit better is only because we are starting to speak louder about this topic, about this issue, how to support both employees, persons with disabilities, and employers themselves as well. So, yeah. Nordic countries have, uh, have always set a kind of example uh, for us, and uh, especially in, uh, in terms of uh, inclusive labor market. Um, could you share the, the Swedish and Finnish, uh, Finnish um, experience? What are the, the current trends in your countries and uh, uh, what, what are the challenges you are facing? You can, maybe you can start. Okay. Uh, as I as mentioned, uh, we are now in a process of, of starting up a new company that the state owns and which is targeting in the first phase to create 1,000 1, jobs to people with disabilities. And at the same time, we are creating a support network for, for local and regional social enterprises to sort of also to sort of, you know, create new jobs. So I think the biggest change in our thinking, that this paradigm change has been from uh, providing services that would provide and, and, uh, and uh, sort of support education and, 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 and training to people to actually creating jobs. Which is which is something which is uh, totally radical, I, I think, in our environment, and this is something we have basically uh, learned a little bit from Sweden. Uh, the other thing I think, which is um, also we have recently had a survey uh, on employers' uh, needs and, and, and thoughts and, and uh, knowledge, and also the experiences on on employing regular companies empl employing people with disabilities, and, and we see that uh, we know from the past that it's the top management always most positive and the HR management is the most critical. They see the risks and dangers, and 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 there still is the. I think it's the same here. Is that the need of the information, that the knowledge, and then to be able to have the support, is is still needed much much more than what is today the situation. That and and we are trying to emphasize that because we are not only counting on creating the jobs in a in special companies, but we also still want to. Uh, increase the stream of people to, to regular jobs, regular uh, companies uh, in the open job market. Thanks. What about Sweden? Yeah, well, of course, we see, as any other country, there is still a, a large gap between the employment rate for people with disabilities and people without disabilities. But we also see a, 
well, uh, positive development uh, in, the, in a few years. We have had an increase in employment rates, but also the awareness of uh, regular employers. Yeah. Also, we, as, <laughs> as you have the service where we ask um, employers on their perspectives and opinions on employing people with disabilities, and we ask them every second year, do you employ people with, with disabilities? And if they answer yes, we ask, why do you do it? And if the, ans the answer is no, we ask, why don't you do it? And we see that the share of employers who says that their customers think that it's important that they take social responsibility, that they employ people with disabilities, is increasing a lot. Uh, in our latest survey, one third of the employers said that their customers think that it's important that they take social responsibility. And that, of course, drives a great movement, and we see that more and more large companies and organizations comes to Samhall and says, we want to make a difference, we want to contribute to a better society. How can we collaborate in some way? Which services can you perform within our workplaces? And that is a great movement. But we also see that the lack of knowledge and uh, prejudices still is, is, is a big topic. 50% of the employers who don't employ people with disabilities says that it's because of their lack of knowledge. They are afraid if, if something happens, a person doesn't show up, uh, there's a, some kind of struggle in the workplace, they don't know what to do. And therefore they employ a, people, a person without a disability instead because it feels like the, that's the safest choice. Thanks, you, you raised the important question and I will, we, we would like to uh, in, uh, engage you in, uh, in our discussion uh, and uh, we would like you to uh, answer a question on Slido platform. I hope you all see on, uh, on the screen uh, our first uh, Slido question. What are the main obstacles uh, to create and develop an inclusive work environment in Latvia? Uh, so please use the hashtag Uzipsni uh, uh, to uh, to join the Slido platform and uh, and um, send in your uh, answer. We will come back to your uh, responses a bit, uh, bit later, but uh, we will uh, continue with the obstacles and uh, opportunities. Um, uh, you mentioned uh, Swedish uh, survey. We also did, uh, as I mentioned, a survey for Latvian employers, and it showed that uh, that most of the uh, employers, when we ask what are the main obstacles, um, actually uh, gave another answer. Could you guess what was the answer? What 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 uh, disturbs them from uh, creating uh, inclusive working environment? No ideas. No, yeah, it's it's difficult to guess because uh, seventy percent said nothing actually, yeah. <laughs> and then about twenty percent uh, mentioned uh, their own stereotypes and uh, prejudices. So uh, uh, it seems quite uh, similar to to what uh, you, uh, you you saw in in Sweden. Uh, but um, from your experience, uh, are these the only obstacles, or uh, there are uh, some 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 other reasons why employers uh, are not so open uh, still for for people with disabilities? Well, yeah. can I start? Yeah, uh, you know, in Sweden we have very high wage subsidizers. If if you want to employ a person with a disability, you can get up to 80% of the salaries covered, and you can also get aid for, like, uh, adaptions of the working environments. You can get a person who supports you in your day-to-day -day routines. So you can get a lot of support from the government. And we often ask our customers, well, this person, for example, this person has been working in your IKEA warehouse for five years now, and you're very happy with the work he or she does. Why don't you employ the person by yourself? You can get almost the whole salary covered, uh, and <laughs> you, you get the person within your own workforce. But then most of them says, well, we don't want to handle the backsides that we believe are there. If something happens, it's much more convenient that you handle all the issues, that you handle replacements, and we are willing to pay for that one 
it, it doesn't matter if it's cheaper, which, um, which is kind of a problem. But what we do is that we actually train and employ our customers in how to lead and work with people uh, w with other needs, with other histories, other backgrounds. So we have this uh, education program called Leading in Diversity, where we train uh, all our customers and people who are working with our employees in the different work sites. And that's been a, a great success for us. Yeah, Juk, what, what about your experience? The similar challenges in Finland or? Partly, of course, we have our peculiar situation where uh, an employer, uh, if the person goes from that job to be uh, on a pe disability pension, uh, you are in a situation of the last employer, and depending on the size of, of your company, you might be uh, expected to com really sort of contribute towards the, the pension cost, which uh, I think some of the companies don't recognize, you know, that doesn't really apply to them. So it's, it's one of those things, they dangerous, they similar to that the people will be away from job for because of illness and all that, so that's one thing. But I think also in our surveys, uh, what we now recognize even more than before is that uh, most of the companies, when they hire people, they don't go through the, uh, which the official uh, authorities, you know, the employment authority, but basically they sort of talk to peers, you know, the other companies, or they go to recruiting companies, etc. So they, that means that, you know, people with disabilities don't necessarily even sort of, you know, belong to the group of people they would look into. So uh, there's another aspect that we have to work with the uh, authorities, but we also have to sort of, you know, get more involvement of the, of the recruiting companies and, and, and you could say enterprise uh, networks to recognize that, you know, the potential of these people. And also, of course, our companies like Tuakanava now and, and the social enterprises have to become more active in order to, to you know, take contact and, 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 and bring out this sort of information. So it's more a lack of, again, the information, not just the information about the possibility, but also where to find these people because they're not basically, you know, they're not asking from the job, job centers, you know, the, the, you know, who could you send us. Yeah, this is a quite typical question I also uh, have received during our diversity training uh, how to actually uh, attract uh, attract uh, people from certain uh, certain groups and the only answer is is really uh, get in touch with the associations uh, representing uh, uh, persons with the different uh, disabilities but we will come back to this Katrina you most probably you you of course you represent uh, uh, social integration uh, state agency but uh, I'm sure that you you meet uh, employers and you 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 have heard uh, their comments besides that everything was already said uh, I can add that sometimes the obstacle is the physical accessibility accessibility to the building itself that probably for people with the physical disabilities the building itself is just not acceptable that just can, can't physically get inside and for the employer it takes a lot of um, a lot of money to rebuild the entrance sometimes or to add any assistive technologies if we are talking about the uh, inner environment in the in the office for example itself if person has a vision, for example, disability, then he has to navigate somehow. And sometimes it really makes a lot of difficulties for, for people themselves and for the employers. And so one of the things that uh, really prevent the employment is the accessibility, the physical environment. And the other one thing is just the lack of knowledge, lack of no knowledge how to act with this concrete person, or any other, what can we uh, like suspect in the process of uh, co-working, or whether how to act and what to do in case of something? Mm -hmm. But we can uh, we can take a look at the uh, results of the Slido survey. Thank you all for uh, being active and uh, providing your uh, answers. So um, uh, I hope we can. Uh, Take a look uh, on the results. Uh, can you see them on your screens? Not here yet, but uh, I can see that uh, half of you have uh, said that uh, stere stereotypes is the, the main obstacle and lack of 
understanding and the one fifth uh, mentions lack of state ad uh, but but not lack of uh, of funding or uh, any any other uh, any other reason so s very close to what do you just uh, mentioned so everything about the information and 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 communication and the awareness uh, thank you um, uh, I uh, I noticed from uh, from another so survey uh, uh, we conducted that when we ask employers what would help you what would you expect from the state uh, uh, it was not about uh, funding it uh, it was only about uh, access to information and uh, and uh, some common source of uh, of information where employer could find all the relevant information uh, in in one website or uh, in in in, in, in uh, one platform uh, what about um, your countries finland sweden what how the state uh, coordinates this information? Uh, is there such information source in, in your countries? Uh, well, in Sweden, uh, it's uh, like, like the different state authorities have specific sector responsibilities, and it's the public employment services, the state authority that, that handles unemployment issues, who has the responsibility for this. Uh, uh, for all, all kind of issues and topics uh, in this sector. So they have uh, kind of good, uh, I would say, uh, a portal on the website where you can get all kind of information and also where you can read about all, all the support you can receive and how you do to apply for it. So, so it's, it's centered around the public employment services in Sweden. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. In Finland? We actually had a sort of portal like that, which actually were three parts. So there was one for potential employers or, or present employers. One was for, for those organizations supporting the employment, uh, sort of you know, specialists and, and job coaches, etc. And the third one for, uh, for people with disabilities themselves. And uh, we were actually quite sort of central in, in creating that and developing over five or six years. Now it's been decentralized, so in a way that uh, the government will sort of take over part of it and then some organization, some other parts of it. So it's not going to be like in one place, but the same information is there. And, and this new expert center of expertise will also sort of create like, a, like a, you could say a case. Uh, case, data, data sort of you know uh, base for cases and, and instructions there and everything so so we've been working a lot on on that but that we still are looking to what is the right formula it's like you know should everything be in one place or or should it be sort of different for different target groups but it's very crucial to have the information available one of the typical uh, things which I hear from employers is about occupational safety. They are worried about safety matters. Uh, uh, very often uh, when uh, HR and uh, the management team is, is, is ready uh, to, uh, to, to, to become uh, more open and, 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 and proactive in uh, attracting uh, diverse, uh, diverse team, very, very often when it comes to occupational safety, uh, these, uh, the, the, this part of the team usually is, becomes very cautious and, and, uh, and say, no, it's, 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 it's better not to take the risk. Uh, what is your experience? Uh, well, our experience? How you deal with this? Well, <laughs> our mindset is that when we are the best, we don't need to do any adaptions. We don't need to think about this because that's when we found a perfect match for a, a person into, into a specific workplace. And what we do is that when we get a new employee, we sit down and go through 15 skills or capacities that we over the years have determined that, that these are important in order to have or to keep a job at the Swedish labor market. And we have matched a quarter of a million, 250,000 people to jobs over the years. So we have kind of, we have quite much experience in doing this. So we have these, this set of skills, which can be anything from your uh, mobility, your uh, writing, but also your personal hygiene, your communication skills, different uh, skills, talents, or abilities that are important. And we set if they have a high, a good, or a limited level of these, but we never talk about their disabilities at all. We actually never register what kind of disability our employees have anywhere, because that's not important. What's important is what you can do and how you can contribute. So when we 
match a person to a job, we look upon what's needed, for example, working in a ho hotel reception. You need to have high communication skills, but you can have a very limited mobility, limited strength, but you need to be able to, to focus and listen and understand. Um, and by doing this, we can find like a perfect match where we don't need to do these kind of adaptions because the disability doesn't matter on that specific workplace. I instead, we, the only thing we know is that the person has the skills and capacities to do the job. But then, of course, we need to make adaptions in some, some cases where we cannot find this perfect match or if a person has specific needs that we, we cannot cater to. But, but that's like our mindset around this is to, instead of ad adapting and working too much with the working environments, we try to find the right job for the right person instead. Yeah, but, but I think it's a general trend in, in the labor market. Uh, labor market and working environment uh, recently has become uh, more flexible and more uh, um, oriented on uh, individuals rather than providing some, some general, uh, general solutions or approaches. Um, you, uh, you have... Uh, we, 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 we ex somehow try to sort of the take the, uh, this, this matter into a totally different perspective. And uh, first of all, we have to remember that uh, more than half of the population, half the working age population, has some kind of illness or, or, or capability that is, is bringing restrictions to their working ability. So we, it's a relative issue. So we have some people who have sort of a more, much more distance to the job market than others. But, but most of us have something which is limiting they're, they're sort of you know what they can do, and and leading from taking it from there, we also have to sort of you know see that when we are preparing the health and safety, and when we're sort of preparing the work working place such that it can accommodate people with different types of disabilities and illnesses, it is making it safer and easier to work with you know for everybody else as well. So so it's not something that you are sort of you know you you sort of you you do the changes you need to do. And, and you create an environment which is supportive and all that, so it, it's actually a better place for everybody to work. And also, we, we do recognize that your uh, capabilities, uh, they decrease uh, over time, you know, when you get older. So it's like most people will sort of become more, uh, you could say, disabled over time. And, and therefore, this is just basically preparing a way for, for sort of, you know, people to be able to work longer in a safer and, and more supportive environment. A few years ago, I had experience supporting a young, um, young uh, guy who uh, lost his sight at the age of uh, six. He was, uh, he was uh, uh, absolutely motivated to, to, to work and to study, and he also currently uh, studies the law and human resources management. But at that point, when uh, he tried to send uh, out his CV and apply for, for certain positions, he, he sent out uh, approximately 200 CVs, uh, but indicating that uh, that uh, uh, um, that he's actually uh, blind and he doesn't re he didn't receive any uh, any response. And I just I just heard about uh, international company, global company uh, hiring the the team. Uh, of uh, of uh, people with uh, with uh, with uh, some some um, uh, um, sight uh, sight problems, but uh, but the industry is chemical uh, production, uh, and they are not afraid of this. They have found the way how to employ uh, these persons. Um, about uh, SIVA, Social Integration State Agency, you have different programs for, uh, for, for different uh, uh, people, and most probably you work with, the, with, the, with the employers. Uh, are you moving also towards this more flexible and more individual approach? I would like to mention that we really do work with uh, people with very different disabilities, like any kind of, and overall we do provide a little bit more than 30 different training programs with different qualification according to each person's abilities, knowledge, experience, etc., etc. What we do, when we contact really directly the employer, we're searching firstly for an in-company practice. So the first place where the person can show and prove uh, new skills 
ability is knowledge he got during the vocational rehabilitation. And then the employer, for example, says, well, yeah, okay, great. Perfect, perfect um, employee, but I don't have really adopted working place. What we can do, we, if the employer says that it's okay for him, we go there, we can see really at the place what exactly is the problem. We can do, uh, we can give suggestions to the employer and what, what exactly is needed to be adopted. And when we are talking about the concrete person that could work at the concrete working place, only the person himself mostly can say what exactly are his needs to adapt the environment. And sometimes, not sometimes, but mostly, these are not even very crucial challenges or, or adaptations needed. So just talk. But it, it, it's most probably possible in small company, but what about large companies? Like you mentioned IKEA, for example. Uh, I, I'm sure that uh, large employers have so many different challenges uh, every day. Do they have the time or opportunity to, to look for this individual approach? Well, then it's, of course, very important to have like a st strong local leadership, people who work side by side with their employees every day and s see their see their working environments. And also, one really important thing for us is to have a very, very good and strong collaboration with the unions. We, we have, uh, well, the trade unions are represented in all, all levels of our organization, and we have very strong collaboration with them. Uh, but I, I feel that I also would like to comment on what Jukka said about like the friendly environment. Uh, that's something that lots of our customers says that since we started working with, with somehow and since your employees comes into um, like our lunch rooms, the whole like company culture gets better, increases because people people normally tends to, to, to not uh, respect the, every part of of a person if they don't know that that, that person maybe ha had a st struggle before or ha have a disability. And I have this kind of extreme example, but one of our customers, a car fa factory, called us one day and said, we need some more people uh, to the factory, but do you have any blind people that can come and w work for us at the assembly line? We said, well, of course, we can find some, <laughs> some people who can perform the jobs and who also are blind, but why, why do you want this? And then they said, because there's such a mess around the assembly line, because tools are not in order, and it's slowing down the whole process that there, that's not, and nothing's in order. And when the management tells the workers that this, these things need to be in order, they don't give a damn. But if they know that they have colleagues where it's crucial that every part is in specific order, then they will adapt their behavior and start respecting their, their colleagues instead. And that's actually what's happened. And they are way more effective right now. But yeah, that's I, kind I, of a, yeah extreme example, but yeah, but it's, it's absolutely also a great example, and I have heard this from uh, from employers which start to uh, to uh, hire the the persons with different kind of uh, disabilities, including mental disorders, and even when they 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 uh, had enough employees, they continued this this program because because their internal surveys uh, showed that uh, the the, the uh, atmosphere and the working environment in general become, became uh, better. But uh, this is a good point where we could uh, involve our audience. So um, uh, please um, uh, see on the screens our next slide or question uh, about main benefits of inclusive working environment. We already started uh, sharing uh, some of these uh, the, uh, benefits, but uh, we would like you to, uh, to share your thoughts um, on Slido using the hashtag Uzipsni. Um, 
Yes, so maybe maybe we can continue with the with the, with benefits. Uh, you mentioned uh, you mentioned this uh, internal uh, internal leadership, and uh, in, uh, in 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 Latvia, I have noticed and heard uh, examples when uh, management team has really started this 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 course, and uh, uh, really the 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 team becomes more diverse uh, and. Uh, this is it. Uh, the, the employer doesn't take the next step to prepare the team, or maybe even to prepare their uh, customers. Uh, they are they are very often not not ready for uh, for for this, and and to have colleagues maybe with uh, including uh, different uh, disabilities, which which they are not aware of. Uh, uh, how, how, what, what would you recommend to, to employers? Where to start? How to prepare the team? We actually have quite a lot of expertise nowadays in, in, uh, in, in sort of you know, helping, the, helping the, the working sort of team that, that the person with disability will be working with. I think that you have to sort of look at both the sort of physical environment here first, of course, and, and you can involve the people there as well. I think something which is also on the increase in Finland is the what we call a inclusive job design, which means sort of tailoring to different jobs, and and that's that's the way to sort of motivate. If you if you because as uh, Albin has been explaining that you you have those teams also, and and, and you pe some people can do something, and some pe other people can do something different. So in order to sort of you know make way for people with uh, you could say different skills or different uh, work abilities. Uh, what you need to look into is the whole of the team or even wider and see what needs to be done and is there something that that person would be especially good at doing and, and what else could be left on it. And, and so you can say that one plus one is more than two because when the person comes in it will be releasing something from the others who are not so keen on doing it and, and everything. So you start from there and, and it's absolutely important that you are involving the, the team people in doing it, so so they have to service everything, so that because they their job is changing as well, and and then of course you have the support, you know the job coach in when it's job coaching when it's at, at its best, is supporting both the individual and the team, and the manager uh, around here, and and this is something where we are still trying to find solutions how to make it more long lasting, like you know have because we also know that this that kind of support from a from a expert job coach. Actually, uh, it's most important that you that you know it's available, both for the team and for the for the individual. When you know it's there and it's somebody you can count on, it's somebody you you trust in, and all that, you actually don't need it so much. It's enough to know that there is this phone number, there is this name I can contact and I can go through, and it's somebody who knows what I'm talking about. You don't have to actually use it, but if you don't have the system where you can have somebody reliable there, then it means that you know people are getting into trouble, you know, faster. So, so it's it's like creating the environment which is basically supportive everything everybody and where the people know that these pe you could say these parts are in their places and and they remain so that you can sort of you know keep developing your working environment together. Yes, I, I can only agree and um, a little bit um, uh, a little bit tell from 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 my side that the friendly environment and really supportive environment at the working place is a, is very important. Is that's that's the basics of uh, of inclusive labor market to speak with the employee with the other employees so they can understand it. Not uh, it won't be enough just to put a person with disability or not even into the working place. That's not a supportive work environment. The person needs it itself, know whom to contact in case of what, and of course educate the employees, the other employees, so they are just aware of any kind of, I don't know, difficulties that just might appear. And why exactly we are um, not open to something? Because we just don't know. Lack of information, lack of understanding, prevent, uh, just increase this feeling of not being open. And that's it, just tell, tell, talk, and that's it, this is what we are. It's, it's possible in, in small teams, but again, I, uh, what, about, what, what about large companies? Uh, is it uh, enough just uh, talking or, or some system is? 
is necessary here. Well, at first, of course, I fully agree with uh, the previous speakers, but, but well, of course, you must have some kind of systematic work in, in a huge company like us. I mean, we, are, we operate at 11,000 different workplaces, so it's, of course we need to have some kind of a pl plate where we uh, have the lowest level. But, but as I said earlier, the, it's mainly about finding the right job for the right person. And as Jukka said, when one person does, uh, or performs some jobs, other people don't have to do those jobs and can focus on what they're good at instead. Right now we are trying to, um, to grow within the elderly care sector. And what we do there is that we try to find jobs that, that the medical uh, educated personnel, like nurses, uh, jobs that, that they actually, they shouldn't do those jobs. Basic jobs uh, that don't need the medical expertise, for example, cleaning, making sandwiches, just sitting down, talking to the elderly, important work tasks, but they are not, it's not crucial that they are being performed by, the, by nurses. So instead we do those jobs and we have had these collaborations with uh, I think it's almost 10 municipalities now and we see that our employees love the jobs, the elderly loves the job, lo loves that we are there because now there are more people who can talk to them, see their needs and the nurses, they love this because now they get to do what they are educated to do and what they want to do. So there are win-win-win situations when you find the, the right job for the right person in that way. Uh, regarding state and, and the government, you also mentioned that you, uh, you work with uh, state armed forces uh, and provide uh, employees for, uh, for them. Uh, what can uh, state or government uh, do, uh, do more? What, what they can lead by, uh, by example? Well, I must say that we don't uh, like, we don't uh, give any soldiers or we don't present soldiers to the armed force. We perform, perform services in their workplaces, like, like handling food and delivering things into fields, cleaning, facility management. So we don't do anything military by our, by our employees. But one really important thing where I think that uh, the state or the public have like, missed the target is the public procurement systems. In Sweden we have, I would say, great legislation where, where you can, can say that the company that is going to perform these services uh, for the public, they need to employ at least 10% people with, with disabilities or they need to to make uh, some arrangements to open up the uh, workplaces for people with barriers to work. But, but this is rarely used. Although there is a solid legislation and a European Union framework, I'd say. I'll actually pick up from what Alvin left here. It's, uh, the public procurement is, 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 is a very important issue here. Uh, we've had a couple of projects so where we've been testing, you know, what can be achieved and, and how it should be done. And our estimate is that actually you could create 50,000 jobs in a country like Finland by using the employment clause in a more targeted manner. And of course, creating the competence, creating the resources and, 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 and sort of uh, creating the willingness to sort of really use those, those, those clauses. Uh, we are now in a, we have actually since two years uh, a new strategy for uh, sustainable uh, public procurement in Finland and, and we've been working very closely with that and sort of you know, trying to do it and and there is now another uh, program uh, to speed up the sort of use of the employment clause and so we have seven different cities which are piloting this and it looks promising that we are now really sort of you know making some movements in, in within the country and we also are now trying to uh, create a pilot program for using the reverse uh, re reserved contract, which means that they will be limited to basically companies like Samhal or, or, or this sort of work integration social enterprises so that they will be even more targeted uh, sort of uh, purchasing from, uh, from this kind of uh, inclusive uh, companies. And, and this, is, this is huge because we are in Finland it's 47 billion euros a year, which is public uh, procurement. So, you know, getting even a modest slice of that is is important so it's creating the other part of course is then uh, is the is the benefit so that you have a sort of uh, 
universal and, and covering sort of in a wage subsidy system and all that, and then you can have, and, and what we're working on is also the guidance. So it means that uh, you, can, you can learn easily about, you know, you can get the support in doing it, because one of the obstacles we have seen is that not only that people in the companies don't know about uh, what to do and hire, but they don't, they think that that uh, the applying for a, jo a wage subsidy would be very difficult and, and very bureaucratic. And, and part of that is true, but part of that, and a big part of that is old information. There's been many, many changes and it's becoming more and more user friendly, but it takes time before the great audience realizes that, you know, it's not as bad as it used to be. So making it easy and, and, and making it sort of re you say reliable that you can get that, get those the supports is important as well, but procurement is is a huge issue potentially. Uh, in Latvia, we also have regulation for socially responsible pr procurements. But uh, when uh, but I'm uh, talking about this with the state or uh, municipal uh, companies, institutions, uh, very often they admit that that actually they uh, in in fact that they are not using them because they they are afraid that they will will not uh, use this regulation correctly and they will receive some some complaints from. Uh, uh, participants of uh, those procurements. Uh, uh, yes, Albin, you you wanted to add. No, no, yeah. no. Oh, oh, I, th okay. I think it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want me? Better. Yes, yes no, you represent yeah. the state uh, already uh, here in in this uh, panel. But uh, maybe in addition to what Albin and you already said, from your perspective, uh, how can state support more? Well. I could say that uh, speaking about the government institutions itself, um, they really start need w would need to start from themselves to show by their experience, by their um, example. And what more helps is a storytelling, really storytelling that we have a successful story, we have a successful experience, and look how great we did, and this would inspire the other ones. That's my opinion. Yeah, my, my I, I can only only agree. Yes, yes. Yeah, I'll now I would like to comment. Uh, well, <laughs> I think they that they could also, of course, lead by acting in a way that I don't know the situation in your countries, but in Sweden, when we see who employs people with disabilities, well, the state and the public is the worst. It's it, it's always the like small and uh, like yeah, middle-sized companies who's the best in employing people with disabilities, and. And then, like the municipalities, ah, they are decent. The counties, nah. And then the state is, is, uh, is worse. So, but so have, have yeah. you asked what, what is the, the main uh, obstacle for them? Because, because uh, most, uh, most often, at least in public space, we can hear that it's about regulation, uh, it's about different uh, you know, accessibility of the buildings, and, and uh, it's too expensive. Uh, well, actually, before I came to Samhall, I worked in government offices for quite a time. I was the chief of staff to the uh, Swedish Minister for Employment. And we tried to carry out lots of programs for getting our state authorities to employ more people with disabilities. We, tra we tried internships, m lots of different programs. And, and, and the government agencies and the authorities, they ne never uh, managed to, like, employ a single person and, and they said it was because the jobs are too too hard we have too high too high qualifications for 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 the jobs that we have in our agencies and the unions says no and and that's like rub rubbish i'd say yeah but it's not a secret that there are many benefits of inclusive working environment, and uh, our uh, audience just uh, participated in uh, in a small survey. Um, I hope that we will be able to see the results on uh, uh, on the screens. And um, actually, the the main benefit uh, indicating uh, by by you um, uh, is uh, increase in employee motivation and uh, loyalty. Uh, this is uh, more than half of um, of uh, respondents mentioned. This is the benefit, and and also uh, increase of labor productivity and quality. 
Uh, no one uh, so far has mentioning uh, fostering innovation, but when we ask the same question to Latvian employers, almost none of them could mention any benefit of, uh, of uh, creating inclusive working environment. What would you say, what are the main uh, or, or a couple of main uh, benefits? Uh? I've actually found it a bit uh, peculiar that this fostering innovation has not getting any support here. I remember the uh, grand old man of uh, disability movement in Finland who just passed away a couple of years back, Kalle Könkele, uh, who was also a politician. He once uh, told in a, in, a, in a meeting that uh, that the message to employers should be that if you want to employ somebody who is creative, you should go for a person with disability because you have to be creative just to get along in your life. So it's, you're guaranteed to be sort of finding an innovative person here. So, and, and I think this, this uh, this diversity that is is there. I think it's this, of course, the same applies to sort of ethnic sort of you know minorities and all that. But it's actually you know having people from all walks of life, uh, very significantly in, in, including the people with disabilities, is is important to sort of you know create the, the environment within the company that sort of you know really leads into innovation and understanding. For instance, you know what your clientele wants. So so it, there is a. So this innovation and also that I like the, the sort of general sort of in a way of thinking in the company improves. I think we also have recognized that you know this, this kind of loyalty to the employer and all that is 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 is, is more it's, it is greater when you sort of you know because if, if you have find it more difficult to find a job and you know, get a proper job, you are not so keen on sort of you know looking for the next job as soon as you are in the first one. So so there there is this part of, of it as well here. I think that uh, it's also important to mention this, the sense of belonging, right? Belonging to some concrete place, working place, society itself, or, and etc. Uh, in my opinion, uh, if we are talking about the benefits of diversity, diversity is a power itself. We are all different. We are all different here, and we can learn from each other something, and this is what makes us better as a person as well. As once a CVO uh, once uh, told uh, why I need uh, uh, people who, who li uh, act and think and, and, and behave like, like myself. I need uh, people who, who act and, and think differently uh, to, to provide some, 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 uh, some uh, add uh, and, and different value to, to the team. So. Yeah, and I of course fully agree, but but also that things that are looked upon as disabilities can also in some <laughs> sometimes be be like super abilities. And so we see that every day. I have like, as I mentioned, twenty six thousand employees that have heard that they cannot get a single job at the Swedish labor market, but now they go to job every day and perform real jobs where that someone is is uh, someone wants to pay for. And we have these great examples. F for example, um, one of our customers is a pharmacy chain who uh, handles like pills that are in small bags that, that are destined for s specific person within the elderly care. So for example, this small bag goes to that person in that, that uh, n nursing home. And it's it needs to be two pills for the head, one for the back, and one for the heart. So it's crucial that's exactly <laughs> the, the right pills every day and uh, in every bag. And I know that would I do this job? I w maybe for 10, 15 minutes I could do it, and then I would lose concentration. I would mi mix the, the pills and the bags up. But we have employ employees with autism who sits all day, all week, performs these jobs to perfection, and they love it. That's like, yeah, the, the, their, their dream jobs. And we could not find better employees doing these jobs if we like, would search the whole, whole labor market for them. So, and we have like tens or hundreds of examples of this where our employees actually performs better than like people without disabilities. You know, in a Volvo subcontractor, our employees with disabilities it was even more effective than the industrial, industrial robots. So we replaced the robots because our employees could do the jobs better. 
So it sounds so simple. Uh, if we, we if we would uh, focus only on strengths of uh, of, of everybody's strengths, then uh, then we would not uh, need to talk about uh, inclusive labor uh, labor market and working environment. It, it would somehow uh, be uh, be um, developed by itself. But is is it so? Is it really so? Uh, so easy to focus on these strengths uh, because it sounds uh, sounds simple, but uh, it seems that well, of course not. Of course, it's it's a lot of job finding the right job for the right person. Of course, we make mistakes. Of course, employees that doesn't function at the, at the workplaces where we that we match them to. But then we just take another round. To try. Well, this d didn't work out. Okay, w why not? Well. Then we th then we learn from those experiences, and then we try to find a new, a new job. So it's just to, to 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 keep on working. But of course, it's not that that simple. Yeah. Good. Uh, today uh, we we have uh, many uh, participants and listeners here in 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 CSIS also on uh, on a couple of online uh, platforms. Uh, most probably, employers are among them. Um, we have lost a uh, couple of minutes left before the end of this uh, very interesting discussion. I think we could spend uh, at least a couple hours more uh, uh, keeping, um, uh, keeping discussing, uh, discussing about uh, inclusive labor market. But what would you be your uh, practical so, uh, suggestions, one or two uh, suggestions for employers who would would like to become more open, who would really contribute to, to inclusive labor market, uh, starting with their own working environment. Uh, just one, two things, uh, where to start? If I can say, uh, it's not that easy to make a first step. Let's start with a talk. We are here to talk. You need an information, we can give it. We, you need. Uh, you need to check the environment, you need to have additional knowledge. We, we are here really for the consultations. A lot of other agencies and NGOs are also open for, for the conversation really in state employment agency in our SIVA itself. Let's start with talk. I think it is very crucial to look for a partner or look for somebody who you can rely on. I mean, it could be another company as well. I think, for instance, Samhal is, I think the importance of Samhal is much bigger than your size, even though you are very big. And this is what we are also aiming at in Finland, that you have those leading uh, companies that are sort of creating uh, with social enterprises and, 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 uh, and Tukanava should be the ones who are leading. So their impact on the working life should be bigger. So you have the models, the role models, you know, the ones you look for and where you look for experience, where you look for sort of cases and where you can look for guidance and, and advice. So that's something. But find, for instance, find a partner who can help you with the sort of, you know, to solve those issues and everything and, 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 and be then persistent. I think it also is very important to keep in mind that at least to our experience, people, when they are have given the possibility to sort of, you know, get a job and, and, and do the work, you know, they are consistently sort of you know, proving to be able to develop and look after their job and, and, and perform much better than, than what was anticipated before. So, and this is like, you know, this place first type of approach where you sort of, you know, don't overtrain, don't sort of, you know, try to sort of, you know, keep people in these different kind of services, training and, and practicing all those, but sort of place the person in the job and sort of, you know, see what it gets, get the support to sort of, you know, take you through those phases, but, but uh, also, put trust in the people and, and you realize that you will you will most likely be uh, be very uh, happy with the results thank you yeah and i i agree that the support part is is crucial and i know as i said in sweden we have lots of different benefits and 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 the things that you can get from the public employment services you can actually get get help from a person who who uh, assists the new employee in the workplace for a limited time, but who also is su a support person to the new employer and, and, and uh, who assists in, in bridging those two, the interests of the new employee and the employer. Uh, and, and I'm sure that, well, your public employment services has, has lots of um, uh, support programs as well. 
but also just to look, when you have a new job opening, look, look upon what is actually needed to do this job. What do you, and, and then don't start, like when you build your like, like searching profile, don't start with, you need to have a formal education, you, you need to have done this and this and this, you need to have a bachelor's degree. Well, look upon what, what, is, ac what is actually needed to do this job. And if it's still a, c a complex occupational role and you want to employ people with uh, disabilities or people with barriers to work, well, break it down in into more more uh, like more working tasks maybe one person can do this one person can do do that and and then see if if you can find like the, the, some some kind of uh, financial support and, and if you can afford to, to do that but but look upon look upon what what's the job that needs to be done uh, Thank you. Uh, so many uh, useful uh, suggestions. Uh, I will sum uh, up them uh, in uh, in a minute. But uh, I would like to thank you for uh, for being here in CESIS, uh, participating in this discussion organized by the Nordic Council of Ministers Office and uh, uh, the Embassy of Finland. Uh, this discussion is one of the discussions in the in the frame of Nordic uh, talks. Uh, 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 yeah, thank you, uh, thank you for being here. I um, I, I, I remind you that uh, that uh, as the panelists we had today, Katrina Sevruka uh, from Social Integration State Agency, uh, Jukka Lindberg from uh, Vatis Foundation in uh, Finland, and uh, Albin Faltmer from uh, uh, Samhall in uh, Sweden. Um, and if I may uh, sum up uh, suggestions you uh, mentioned during and your experience during this uh, this quite short, I would say, uh, discussion, um, I could mention three of them. Uh, first thing is uh, about focusing on strengths rather than uh, disabilities or weaknesses. Uh, we uh, Each of us uh, might uh, might have uh, tec second thing, which which uh, I think was uh, present. Uh, the whole discussion was about communication and uh, talking. We all should should talk uh, with each other uh, more frequently. And the third thing uh, is to partner. Uh, you should remember. We all should remember that we are not alone. We uh, we can have uh, partners which which uh, might support us within our teams or uh, uh, outside the uh, organization or the company with the knowledge experience. Uh, and I think this festival slump is a great opportunity to to start networking. Uh, there will be a lot of discussions involving social enterprises and uh, and other companies organizations which uh, might uh, support you in uh, creating more inclusive labor market and working environment in your organization. Thank you for uh, being with us and see you in the further discussions. Thank you.